just did it. For those of you first joining us, uh, essentially we're, we're guys, uh, a handful of guys who are, for the most part, consumed by professional development. We love podcasts. We love books. We love reading, um, reading books, obviously. Um, we try to give our take on what's going on, what's hot in the world without the fluff, um, a little bit more raw, and a little bit of humor. Today, we're talking about personality tests, and we all took the Enneagram test, but before we get into that, we can either touch on anything new that's going on with you guys, or we can touch on that sound that we heard Bobby just play. Oh, we want to touch on that again? <laughs> <laughs> we can more than just touch on it. We so, can jam on so it. So we all just found out that that's our, uh, that's our intro. Yeah, so the new intro that's on the podcast we we listened to over the week. I actually Matt hadn't listened to it, and I was like, "Dude, did you hear that intro?" Give it, give it a rip, Bobby. <laughs> Hold on, that one again? No, the actual. Do you have the intro to us? Oh, I thought you oh. had the intro pulled up. Oh, I. Can, oh, we I were mean, gonna add that noise to the intro. That's what I thought we were saying. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can we're pull still up figuring that this whole out. thing. I mean. If yeah. You guys, give me a so while episode three, guys. While he's <laughs> while, working out some kinks here. While he's pulling it Does up. Does anyone have any Jeopardy music that we can play? Majority. While for this? Majority of the guys here have a, a new challenge going on. No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, sorry. I'm Dan, sorry. why don't you talk about your challenge? Um, well, actually, I'll let Brad kick it off because they've actually started before me. Because I was being strategic. These fucking guys. So before, <laughs> like, oh, before yeah, dude, challenge starts on Wednesday, but we're gonna start on hey, Monday. Technically, before, before we you can't get call in, it a challenge either. Before you get into what your strategy is, why don't you talk to people about what the fuck it is? Okay, what is it, Brad? Okay, so uh, everybody knows we're all big Andy Frisella fans. He has a program that he created called Seventy Five Hard. So basically, the nuts and bolts of it are: um, you have to drink a gallon of water a day. Two workouts of 45 minutes each. One has to be outside. You have to read 10 pages of a real book, Colin. No <laughs> digital books. No digital books. Um, you have not to take even a, a Kindle, Dan. That's yeah. that, not even a Kindle. You have to take a progress a pick. And am I forgetting something? I do. Uh, I do no want to cheat take meals. Oh, no alcohol. No cheat meals. Follow a diet. I want no to shout alcohol. out to Dan yeah. for for having my back today. I did. I had yeah. your back today. That just means which they're is rare be losers. that I have your back. <laughs> you did. Brad's gonna be yeah. me and you. <laughs> so a little background on that is, uh, Colin was reading. Colin started three days ago. Bobby's like twenty days in. Today I'm on is my Kobe Bryant day twenty four. Look at that man. He's deep. <laughs> yeah. Rest in peace. So I'm on day five. Colin was like three days deep, and I asked him if he was reading reading a digital book, and he said. Yeah, so he's, uh, so he's he's lost. back to zero. <laughs> so he's starting fresh again ah. today. So, but today is technically day number one day for, for, the group. for our for group. The uh, yeah, Correct. deal. So we're going seventy five days from now, I guess, essentially to see who can make it. Dan went with the strategy of eating as much food as humanly possible I'm beforehand. So Dan took a picture of twenty dollars worth of fast food <laughs> yeah. yesterday in fried pickles. So yeah, where, were you, where were you before Taco Bell? You were at Hooters. That's where all the Hooters. Fried food yeah, was. we had some fucking fried food. Beers. Yeah, you a couple we, beers, you and said then we, there was nobody in that other booth. No, my my wife was with <laughs> okay. me. So she ate a salad. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the uh, the Hooterizer. Which is Hooterizer. cheese sticks, onion rings, and <laughs> oh, fried Is that like the, their you version of like deep. a sampler platter? Yeah, just like yeah. all the fried stuff? Yeah. And then I we left, and I drove past Krispy Kreme, and I was like, fuck, I know I should be hitting Krispy <laughs> Kreme, but I'm not going to. And then we did hit fucking Dairy Queen. Oh, I'm so Can't jealous. Can't pass like that But here's the thing. like, So I know it, the challenge is all for fun and games. Like We want everybody to succeed. There is $100 on the line. Yeah, there is $100 on the line. For anybody that fucks up, like I don't know, hundred times four, right? Yeah, true. It's a hundred dollars a man. So the winner is going to get three hundred bucks. Correct. (laughs) Math. That's good math. Quick math. And Matt, Matt is not partaking just because he's already skinny and fit and very responsible. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Look at that. Do you have an entire soundboard on there? (laughs) No, it's just something called Rap Air Horn. It's another. It's another app. I'm gonna just. Your time. Just on drop on yeah. There's a sad trombone. There's this uh, ham horn. It just goes ham, 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 ham. <laughs> I don't know what the point of that one is, but it's fun. Did you just see that coming, though? Like, you had that. I had the sad trombone go. waiting for, like, the first moment of, like, something, like, somewhat depressing. And that's depressing. <laughs> yeah. That he's just, he's resorted to White Claws. Just going to watch from the line. Yeah, he wants to drink his salters. Bar. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Ain't no laws. When that's you're right. drinking Claws. Yeah. Homeboy. So. There are soft seltzers. That's mm. what I've been drinking. 
Mm. <laughs> just doesn't do the same. <laughs> just doesn't hit the same, does it? Nope. nope. You don't get messages from your neighbor with uh, soft seltzers. That's it. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> In the meantime, while we're all talking, Colin's just taking notes still. Yeah, Colin. Had a week I, I, to hey, are you ready for this week? Are you this. ready for this I took week? this personality assessment that we're going to be talking about like five minutes ago. So, <laughs> Whose fault is that? Yeah. I didn't know. You know so I finished our mine group not too long ago either, either, so it's okay. And, you know, like I just don't, you know, I didn't have time to go back. Well, know? I heard this, like, you're supposed to take a progress pick every oh, yeah. week. And so I heard that, like, the more you lose, the bigger it gets. Wait, pro- so, <laughs> so my Plumping. progress pick is kind of like... You're it's just you're, yeah. you're losing and, and gaining. And I'm gonna see if it if it gets bigger. <laughs> oh, I see. I see what he's taking a picture oh, of. Yeah, oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's talking about penises, and yeah. he's talking okay. about penises. His, <laughs> I'm guessing flaccid. Are you looking to grow on the soft side or the hard side? Uh, Are I'm you a, a shower? I'm a grower. You're a grower. Okay, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get it up anymore. So before we, you know, get says in, the four get kids, into the, get yeah. into the girth <laughs> of the uh, of the podcast. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do we? Is there anything else going on in the professional development world? Anything quotes, books, audio books that you guys listen to that you want to talk about? This challenge right here is going on. No, I mean, in terms of we have to read a book. So I don't know what books you guys are reading. I chose Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I actually had to look at that because I just chose this book like two hours ago. It does look like you're pretty deep in it already, though. You're past ten pages. uh, yeah. Unless that's a lot of content oh, no. sections. This is just this really cool BP Fab. <laughs> no, bro- professional development. Oh, professional bro. development. Created by, yeah, created by BP Fab out yeah. of St. Louis, Missouri. Don't Very cry. cool. It's a bottle opener, too. Whenever I complete 75 hard, I can open a beer. What so. book are you reading, Colin? Oh, well, restarting. Yeah, I was reading Relentless, but now i got to come up with a different book. So. You can just buy it paperback off of Amazon. I bought all of my books recently off Amazon. Yeah, I, I see something now. I like, I buy it. I need to start now, so I need something that's around the house. I you better hope it shows up today. I might have one today. In, my, in my backpack. I'll have to check before okay. we leave. I have Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> you do? You want you, yeah. you want it? Yeah, I, yeah. I've never yeah, read I've it never yet, read that but it, I, it's sitting there. It's a good yeah. book. Um, what are what are you reading, Bobby? So I'm re- I talked about it for a very brief moment last week. I'm almost done with it now. I'm reading that sleep book by Nick Littlehales, and um, so I've become super obsessive over what my sleep habits look like at the end of the day. Um, I just bought a it's a I'm gonna mess up what exactly it's called, but it's basically like a daylight daytime dimmer so instead of having your alarm wake you up in the morning on your phone and then automatically your phone goes off you get notifications you get distracted by that it actually is a light that gradually has like a thousand different levels of light <laughs> mine would have to be on a thousand to wake me up <laughs> really? oh it yeah starts light so, wouldn't wake me like, up the idea is so there's a lot of different pieces of this book it's I like a sunrise right yep i and it's so it's the whole point of it is to get your circadian rhythm like intact so like if you were uh camping like the sun would naturally wake you up it would get warm all that stuff now you don't have that necessarily as far as the warmth goes in your nice house apartment shanty wherever you live and uh so i bought one of those i invested way too much money in that however um i used it for the first time this morning and it was actually super fucking pleasant did it work Um, it worked and i had like crickets waking me up and the next thing i know i was looking around and i was just like all right, I guess it's time to get up. And I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I set the dimmer to wake me up at 530, and I woke up at 540 without feeling like I had some annoying alarm that, like, where people have a lot of just yeah. negative, like, thoughts whenever it comes to that that alarm that sounds off every single day. Mm-hmm. So between, I mean, the guy who wrote the book, Nick Little Hales, co- he, he's a sleep coach for a lot of elite athletes like David Beckham and um, the whole Manchester United team and with all these Olympic athletes. So mm-hmm. – that's something that has been like I recommend that to all you guys. It, that's what, a book what's that I. Book called again? It's just called Sleep, Sleep. by Nick Littlehales, and it uh, it's really opened up my eyes to just how to form better habits at also at night and then first thing in the morning too. Instead of going right on checking your phone for text messages, emails, uh, notifications, social media, all the distractions, I pick up a book and I start reading it. And it just so happens that I'm reading Sleep right now, but my next book that I'm reading is a follow-up to that called um, Why We Sleep. 
So I thought it was going to be awake. Yeah, I was, I was, sure. was going to definitely. No. I would have bet money it was awake. <laughs> no, th- but that would be a lot better. It's it's by a different author. This was actually all recommended to me by uh, one of my mentors, uh, Chris Hager, who is um, was with Aflac for like 15 years uh, as a market director, and now he's actually started his own company. And he's this guy has a sauna in his house. He's got this chili pad to help him fall asleep, and he has all these different things that he does. And he's the one who actually turned me on to the whoop as well to just focus on getting your Bobby's recovery on the, percentage the product there. drop line today. I am dude. I need yeah, to figure like, out how got to make some money on these get fuckers. Sponsors, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like Bobby like has a secret deal outside yeah. of this. Yeah, me too. Okay, he guys, plugged so. himself into this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> to I don't all these have, products in. Now on this little app that I have, there's no evil laugh thing. So I'm going to have to work on my own. Yeah. Going to have to work that one in there. No, I wish I could say that there were some underlying motives, but there's not. I'm just really excited and am nerding out about it hard. Hard. Um, once I do, I'll, I'll let you guys know. What you got, Perfect. Red? <laughs> uh, the book I'm reading is Extreme Ownership by Jocko. I think most of you guys have read it before. I'm pretty yeah. I'm pretty deep in it. I actually really enjoy it. I've always been interested in like wartime stories, anyways. So then the fact that you see you know a, a story behind the principle and the application is pretty sweet for me. It makes it really easy to read. It. Pretty much every chapter has a an example of what they did in Iraq. A principle behind it and then a real life business principle to apply it or application to apply it so it's been real good for me so far hmm. nice. nice you'll read that in like three you days. no i'm, I'm like 10 What's pages that? Like, yeah. stop move on bring a couple of different books nothing that i'm like sticking to right now yeah I, i'm listening Dabbling. to audiobooks yeah what That's are you listening it. to uh you uh you are a badass by jen sincero yeah. it's a, it's it, not that it doesn't resonate with me i read it four I've or five times one. So, I don't know where I just saw that recently, but it. I've been listening to Jim Quick because you mentioned that last week, and I know you sent one yeah. earlier this week too, Colin. But mm-hmm. maybe I heard it somewhere on there. I don't know. Yeah, I started and I started this with this book called The Buddha and the Badass. Um, hasn't caught my attention yet, but there's some good concepts. So nothing crazy. You guys are fucking killing it right now. I'm just, <laughs> We're forced to. I always feel like Matt gets us gets around the table, and then. And then, it's and just then like, we don't talk about you. No, I'm just here. For he the dodges agenda. it. He that's dodges it. That's it. He's the MC. Keep yeah. everybody in line. That's, good. That's, that's right. Speaking of which, uh, we all took what's called the Enneagram test. Now, did any of you know that an Enneagram is the shape with nine points? I knew that after I, I looked at the website. Well, no, I didn't know that was actually the name of the shape. Is it on yeah. the sheet? Oh, I look, it's did right know there. it had nine points. So, oh. show, show that to the viewers sure at home, Bobby. Can... Put it up on the camera there. It's that big. Oh, I thought you were talking about the little... We got a camera oh, right there behind you. It's This is a page. Of <laughs> yeah. Us. So, And we're going to put this on the website, too. Yeah. If you guys want to take the assessment yourselves... Um, Let us know what you got, what you think. So what yeah. the Enneagram essentially tells you is it, it places you into a type, one of nine types. And it um, the big reason to do this, why it's cool, is to understand your motivators, understand, obviously, the personality type that you are. But more importantly, like I'm realizing that like understanding yourself and getting in through one of these tests is kind of the kickoff for professional development. Bobby. God damn. You, if, good so, thing we aren't actually kinda, live. Man. <laughs> That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the app was Guys, cool. I, that was that was a cool I ad. had this on. <laughs> Dude, I was on such a we fucking run. We could play the rap air horn. I know. I We're just totally fucking. Yeah. And just we know how mad it is. He's got to start we'll all over. Okay. Okay. Do you want to start this from the top? It's really cool. From the very top. Welcome to the professional development. Beep, 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 beep. Where the drinks are cold and the bitches are hot, hot, hot. <laughs> All right, where were, where were we for real? For real. So, um, you've got to understand yourself before you can start to improve upon it, right? Like, if Brad was going to fix up a car, he'd want to take a look under the engine. If Dan was going to improve somebody's swing, he'd have to see the swing before he can actually do any of that. So, that's the whole idea. It's understanding yourself so you can figure out what your motivators are to tap into those to try to get better as a whole. So, we'll talk about. Um, I guess we'll talk a little bit about everybody's take on this. And then we're going to have a bet going on, which is we're all going to guess each other's types. We'll go through a quick overview of each of those. And then um, from there, I think the loser has to buy lunch, right? Healthy lunch. As long as it fits within our diet protocol for 75 hard. 
Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I guess you guys want to give your kind of, before we get into each of them, do you guys want to give your take on the test or what your thoughts are on personality tests in general? I well, mean, this, I, no. I can dive in. Like This was totally Dan's idea, so roll with it. I don't know if it was my idea. It was, it was actually, your idea. It was actually Matt. It was your 100% idea. idea. Okay, it was my idea. Fuck it. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. Good <laughs> idea, Dan. I think. But anyways, I think personality assessments are really cool. I think they're better. <clears throat> so being in the recruitment space, um, I think they're great tools from a management perspective, but I don't think they should be used um, from a hiring perspective, even though most employers will use them for hiring. Hey, we want this certain type of personality and i can see that if you actually use them the right way for example um one of the my last corporate job <clears throat> we kept having high turnover in one department except for a couple people they were they fit well cu culturally and we didn't know why so what i did is i pulled all their personality assessments and the people who were sticking around had a very similar personality the manager had a similar personality but all the people leaving were outside this particular personality type and so i thought that was a super interesting like little study i mean it was only 10 people that i was studying but um it was just interesting from a culture perspective why they can be very important for relationships for employers um, but you can also use them to find people's motivators how do i manage this person and so i'm a big fan of personality assessments the, th the problem is is that when people take them for uh i guess to get a job a lot of times they may hit buttons that they think that the employer wants to hear not necessarily what they the truth yeah and so that's why it's cool that we did it uh because we have nobody to fucking lie to yeah the tough part in the the <laughs> recruitment world or just like in the hiring world in general is if you're going to invest the money in it, you're going to disqualify people that are, you know, that could potentially be a good fit, right? There, yeah. and it even says on the website, like it's a real good indicator, but there's no such thing as an absolute and people can change. Yeah. And, and so that was one of the questions since we're on it, it's a good, good spot to kind of plug this in is, do you think there's a personality type that is successful and a personality type that isn't successful or is, are there successful people and unsuccessful people in every type of personality and i would think it's more the latter my opinion i would agree with you i mean i don't think a personality actually decides if somebody is successful or not i mean they might fit in a better niche somewhere but right. i don't think that actually right. determines if they are successful or unsuccessful based on their personality it might be tougher for some people but no but i think any, yeah, like you were saying anybody can be success like anybody can be successful but not everybody's motivated by the same things. Exactly. So the goal to become successful is to find what drives you, what motivates you, get, getting behind your why and, and all that jazz. But I I would agree. I don't think there's one successful type. Yeah, I, I, I don't either. I think everybody just needs to know their strengths and weaknesses and, and live their life. Now, I know Brad probably hasn't, but have any of you guys had to take a personality assessment to yeah. get a job? Well, not to get a job, but... <laughs> with so with aflac we use velocity so i've taken a lot of these personality assessments and we have we actually just got access to like a paid version of this and as managers we're like we fill out our personality type and it's like this was very the one that we took the enneagram was really i, I don't know what the word is but it was pretty in depth you know like the, we asked they asked a lot of questions that we had to answer and this one that i did for through velocity is really about like 10 questions yeah and then we can also fill it out for people so i could fill it out for people on my team figure out who what kind of person i think that they are so i can manage to their strengths and their weaknesses better um and the point of it being shorter is to go through those quickly and figure out what kind of person that is and we relate them to different bird types in ours so this is really interesting to see it in a little bit more detail yeah now did you is, did you think this was accurate for you guys What'd I thought think? it was pretty. I thought it was pretty spot on for myself. Yeah, it was yeah. pretty spot on for me. There was one part, one trait that they described that my wife laughed at, but that was it. Really? Well, yeah. I, I mean, so we did a free version, and the the one that we're going to put on the website will be a free version. There is a more in depth version that has what's called wings, and I guess so. Like you could be a type five with a wing here, and it means like. It, it just goes even further in depth than the one that we took, but this one was free, so we're like, fuck yeah. it. You know, um, and then if you go to the Enneagram Institute's website, you can actually read even in more depth, and 
you can read how you how compatible you are with other types. So if you're a type two and you're in a relationship with a type seven, you can kind of see the pros and cons of that. Or if you're in a business relationship or whatever, you can kind of start to to see how that works and, and, and how to manage that relationship as well. So uh, I think it's super interesting just to kind of dive into this. And this was a fun little thing that we could do that I think is kind of good for, you know, professional development, understanding, you know, our strengths and weaknesses and motivators and whatnot. Yep. I so, agree. So let's hear it, Matt. What are all the types? Okay. And if you guys, uh, if you want to follow along, you can just Google Enneagram or, and kind of take a look for yourself. But the one that we took was your Enneagram coach.com. Uh, and it, if you just fill out something, you can print off the, uh, the overview of the core motivator. So of the nine types, I'm just going to kind of list the, the names because they reading all this would probably take some time, yeah. but everybody has already kind of taken a look at all these. And so then we'll go around the room, uh, for each person. And then we'll just kind of see if we can pick out who's who. So are we going to write these down? So I'll so write it down. A secret okay. I'll write it down. So, uh, type one is the moral perfectionist. Type two is the supportive advisor. Type three, the successful achiever. Type four, romantic individualist. Type five, investigative thinker. Type six, loyal guardian. Type seven, entertaining optimist. Type eight, protective challenger. Type nine, peaceful mediator. So we will go with, here's what we're gonna do. To make it kind of quick, we'll just start with Bobby and then we'll go to my right. So. Uh, so essentially, Colin started, or Brad started off. You're going to say what Bobby is. Dan, you're going to say what Bobby is. Then I'll go ahead and give my guess. Okay, so obviously I met Bobby like two weeks ago. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is the hardest yeah. one for me, too. <laughs> so get, to get a good gauge, you know, off of him is tough, you know, based on how much we've interacted. But um, are we... Am I just telling you or am I telling everybody? Is you this like a secret ballot? It, no. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know, actually. So just give, here, here's the deal. Just give what you think just it like is. Just like the type? Just give the type. We'll like just, just we'll say give, a number? We'll Who circle am I? around the room. Or we can do – we can get into what we Let's think. Do, we should do Bobby last, right? I don't care. Give though. him some time to think about it. Brad's a tough <laughs> I one. Give, I don't give a fuck what. Okay, okay. I'll go with it. <laughs> okay, basically, quick <laughs> – guess of what bobby is would be a type five as a investigative thinker he seems to like really get in depth about a lot of the like things that you know his books his products that he plugs um so i feel like he really yeah yeah <laughs> what type was that investigative thinker type so five. but i mean it's hard for me to tell his you know like his weakness on it because i don't know enough of like what would get under his skin but i do think that he likes being capable and competent of everything he's talking about so we'll see if that's right. Okay. Dan. Um, well, now that Brad kind of explained all that, I'm kind of leaning towards a five. I would say five or six. So you got to pick one. Yeah, well, Actually, one. technically that thing fucking gives you top two. I didn't see that. I only got one. <laughs> no, yeah. if you scroll all the way to the bottom. It'll, it'll give you a secondary. Oh, well, I didn't do that. Was, that's fine. I mean, I we can just go through, either. and I, I don't have to check any, like, He doesn't anything. even know what a second one was. I don't so really care. I can find out. I don't really care how we do this. Do you guys, Just toss do it you out wanna, there. Do you want to just throw out the whole bet thing, and you just want to give your take on all of them? Or do you actually want to try to guess it and make it a I mean, I'm really bad at this this guessing shit. But I'll go just with... Just throw it out. Who so, cares? So I say one. five or six. I mean, I, mean, uh, I can't... Pick one. 5.5. Fucking pick one. Oh, I see my top two types now. Hey. Six. I'm going to go six. <laughs> Why? Why six? That's so weird. Yeah, why would you pick that if you're between two? Oh, my God. Two? Why would you think Jesus. I'm a six? I'm just kidding. You picked a no six? Idea. Matt, what you got? God damn it. Loyal Guardian, dude. Matt's uh, definitely got notes that he took on everybody for Thanks. the week, so this should be pretty quick. <laughs> no, I just... Uh, I'm I, flattered. You're not the, letting your people fucking leave. Type seven. <laughs> you're not leaving your people? The entertaining optimist. So happy, fully satisfied, content. Um... I, that that kind of just screams Bobby, and I just think he's in. He's always got to. And let's be real, Matt does know Bobby the most. Yes. So he should True. have the best answer here. Correct. <laughs> Who knows, man? We don't. You don't know. We'll find out. Yeah. Right. Colin. Colin. Um, I put for Bob. I put successful achiever. Do you go by Bob? By the way, I'll go by Bob or Bobby. Those are. I'll respond to those. I don't mind Bob at all. Bobby, okay. I had someone ask me that today. I, they asked me like, "Do you go by Robert?" And I go, "Never." <laughs> Colin just doubles down. He doesn't. Hey, I'm he cool doesn't with ask. Bobby. I'll answer he to Robert, goes. Bob, Bobby. 
Those are pretty much what I'll answer okay. to. Asshole. We'll, and then uh, do you guys just want to go? Do you want to tell us now? Yeah, yeah, you were spot on, Matt. <laughs> was I, yeah. seven? What was your second one then? Uh, so what the second get? one was actually number – oh, where did it go? The, uh, number it was type number three. Oh, oh, so Colin was right then. Colin yeah. picked uh, that, yeah, so. Picked yeah, so. Yeah, so, yeah, seven was my – Okay, my, I, I got to be far. honest. I was just fucking throwing out a number here. You were like, I didn't <laughs> I didn't read these. I love how Dan picks the topic and is the least prepared out of anybody. To talk That's about true. That is true. <laughs> No, I know yeah, mine. Yeah, number seven, <laughs> and I I wasn't surprised. Well, like, I didn't read any of these before I took the test. I just took them, and I just answered them uh, in really honestly. Um, but I think it's totally right. I mean, you look at the, like, <laughs> I thought the gluttony thing would throw, like, be, like, the main key thing that you guys would look at be just because like you guys know so, well, how so fucking I was, hard i would go well i was gonna <laughs> say that like you don't smoke weed anymore you don't drink anymore but you used to do that you used yeah. to consume heavy amounts of it and you're very much a and i have and a now, huge fear of missing out now you're just a big you know product whore and trying yeah. all these yeah all this digital technology, <laughs> hey it's better than the other kind of whore yeah. i was before oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you go on bobby's instagram page he has all those uh People you can follow. <laughs> all the links. Ten percent discount. All the coupons. links in his profile. Yeah. I need to look for you. Use that. Yeah. I have a cousin. Use code hashtag Bobby D. Yeah. I, I have a cousin that does all that stuff, and she is just super fit. And are you gonna list her name and Instagram page? Uh, yeah, it's called the Sweat Stash. You should follow her, uh, Andy Drummond. She's awesome. <laughs> so did you think you thought it was spot on? Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good, and I like the three as well. Like looking at some of these other ones, I could I could see why you get guys said some of those things. So but make sure when we're talking about stuff and we're listing the number make sure you say why three and what what it is about those attributes that you like just for everybody kind of listening oh sure so uh i mean seven was spot on right uh just because i mean as far as the what was it the core fears being deprived trapped in emotional pain limited or bored missing out on something fun i've always said that i like i have this fear of being boring and I don't want to end up like one day having no friends and like, I want to keep making new friends. I'm not shy of that. So that's a, that's a huge thing. And I hate missing out on things that are fun. So even though I've stopped drinking, I'm like, I want to do all yeah. of it. I'm pissed that I can't go play volleyball right now, but it's only just cause of my shoulder, I still would come up and hang out, right. but that drives me crazy. Um, as far as like the, <laughs> the gluttony thing is just so spot on, man. Like I find something that I love and I go really hard on it. It just depends on like, I've gone hard on a lot of the, bad things and um Weed, booze, I, that's just a fear girls. yeah it's yeah. just a, it's a fear Power of mine that, that i'm gonna that that something like that's gonna happen and at the end of the day i i really truly do just want to be happy and i want to live a long life so yep. that's why number seven um number three i i didn't look at it a ton but uh like i do have a fear of being just like uh what is the um, oh shoot, I'm gonna butcher it. But I, they talked about it on that Jim Quick podcast just recently. Just like that fear of being almost exposed for uh, there's a like a syndrome that they that they have. I'll look it up by the end of this so uh, we can make more sense of it. But Im- imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. Yes, 100. percent That's it. So um, imposter syndrome is the idea that <clears throat> at any point in time somebody's going to call you on your bullshit. Somebody's gonna. Find out that you're a phony and put you on blast. And I've been, and like, I'll be 100% honest. Like, I'm pretty good at my job, and I'm, I've been pretty good over the last couple of years of bullshitting my way through a lot of it. Whether I was like showing up hungover to stuff or making excuses for things because I was either drunk or I was, or I was hungover as shit, and I didn't want to do certain things. And I just, I, I talked a really good fucking talk, and now I'm actually learning to walk it. And that's where I think that, like, I still have that fear, though, of, like, someone calling me on that shit. Dude, I have the same shit. So, like, I think that's why... We're not talking about your personality right now. <laughs> Dan's a three. So could you just, could you just wait Dan's a three. Syndrome. Yeah, could you just yeah, wait a second, Dan? Trying to go all it's not your no, turn I'm right saying, now, Dan. I, we're talking about imposter syndrome, <laughs> so fuck it. No, go ahead. I'm not ready. No, 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 you can talk. We don't want you Dan. to give away your, your, Dan, your personality. Yeah, go ahead. I... Never mind. You guys will call me out on my shit. Fucking... Dance three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I was just going to say public speaking wise, I think that's part of the fear that at least I have. Plus, I think other people would have the same fear where if you go up and you give a, you give a speech or whatever, people will call you out on your shit. Like, hey, you said this and it wasn't true or whatnot. And I have that problem whenever I go to like a conference and I'm around all these fucking multi-million dollar CEOs from the mortgage industry all around me. And it's like, I'm supposed to get up here as a 32 year old, talk to all these dudes who built these massive companies and 
you know, be yeah. a subject matter expert, which I am, and I am the best fucking recruiter in the room. Number one in the USA. But at the same time, there's something right, there that, like, I just feel like they're going to call me on my shit. syndrome, or do you think it's a fear of being inadequate? Like, do you feel like... No. Okay. I, I, I like think it... taking you serious if you got up there. I think they take me serious because of the one-on-one interactions that i have with them but when it comes holistically like they've been in the industry way longer than i've been in the industry and so like i can tell them what i think and what i know and what i'm seeing but i just feel like they're gonna say well i've done this for fucking 30 years and you're wrong you know i feel like that's something where like i run into this a lot with my job where we know the right way to run shit and make shit work and we hate it when people like try and tell us like oh well this is the way that we're gonna do this and i used to just say oh okay well we'll do it however you want early on and now i'm like listen uh if you want to do it that way that's great um however that's not how i do business and it's not aflac will not be a good fit here if we set it up like that so if we can't do it this way um we'll just have to shake hands and maybe this will be a fit in the future well and and what happens like when you become like when you become like an order taker as i would like to call it you know like things just fall apart you Mm -hmm. know what i mean like then you just have to say yes to everything you you find the need to oh was i putting you to sleep no i got a piss you know like and then and then you're running around doing all these things you know and like it's you're all over the place. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if you stick to a process, tell them the way it's going to be, I think people more respect that in the end. Yeah, you it know? happened today. We have this uh, this large client that we're working with, and they have locations in Illinois, Arizona, and California. And they're like, oh, yeah, we just saw you coming in and sitting here, and, uh, like, whoever wants to sign up signs up. And for us, it's like, well, no, we need a chance to educate every single person, yeah. two group presentations to see everyone, one-on-one presentations to educate them after. And it's not, like, of course we do it because it we're going to make more money that way absolutely however it's also for them because we get to educate each person on what their options are so they know what they're saying Mm -hmm. yes or no to if we just completely miss out on that then and we i used to do this whether it was a three-man company or a hundred-man company we would just listen to whatever they have to say because at the end of the day we were just like we want to get the account open and all this stuff now that we're focusing more on our process and why x y and z is so important and explaining that to them if they don't see the value in that then they're not a good fit as yeah. a client yeah, yeah yeah no i'm with you 100 percent. our jobs are pretty similar and i think the same thing you know like in very early on i you know when i would get an account that maybe i felt like i, f- I had that fear of being inadequate you know like because i was like man i've never dealt with an account <laughs> like this you know what i mean like right. and, I'm, and i get on the phone and i'm trying to like really schmooze them you know and like they ask me a question i don't know you know and then i start backtracking and it's just it falls falls through but i think it comes with progressing in your career just having a little bit of a backbone to have a tough conversation Mm -hmm. and i think you know like business owners especially like they've they've built something from the ground up they have skin in the game they respect that you know they respect the hustle more than you think you know and i think if you go into it thinking that you'll have a lot more success i think you know yeah so wrapping up bobby bobby is there anything in your personality No, that's a lot of me uh no no we're gonna go through everybody but is there anything in the personality assessment that like really stood out as like wow or anything that you could use maybe to your advantage on how you could tap into your motivators uh so i to be honest i haven't looked at it enough to figure out exactly how i can utilize this but i think it just makes once again my goal here with 75 hard and me making all these changes recently is to be more self-aware and uh that just it confirms a lot of the stuff that i already knew and then it also reminds me that hey like you were scared of like the imposter syndrome being exposed, like you better make sure that you don't fuck that up. Yep, absolutely. So let's uh, hit it around the table for Brad. Dan, start us off. Give the number for Actually, Brad. Actually, I'll go last. Go Just go. Brad's a hard one. I'll go. I, uh, I, had, I had Brad as a one. Okay. Uh, Bobby? For Brad, so I was looking at this, and I just lost the one that I liked for him. So I liked him on uh, type five. Um for him and do you want me to go into like some reasons why let's just get the numbers for now okay sorry <laughs> let matt five. record it so record. wait wait what so just say what type five is type five is the investigative thinker okay and then i looked at brad as the protective challenger i i'm really starting to doubt that but i'm i already wrote it down it's well, tough there's so many choices that's that's what i was yeah it, it is hard to like analyze somebody else but i was gonna go with type eight protective challenger as well i don't think you challenge people unless they say shit to you first and then you'll challenge them and yeah you know what i mean like but right. I, I don't think you go out looking for the so verbal we, sure we've got two protective challengers <laughs> yeah we've got one 
uh, moral, perfectionist. moral perfectionist, and then Bobby went with the investigative thinker. Brad, what's the uh, what's the verdict, brother? Cue it. I turned it off because I got that phone call. No, <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we heard it turn off. So <laughs> I know Matt's two for two now. I, yeah, I, there it is. Oh, <laughs> Justin, <laughs> so, <Dang it. laughs> coming through in the clutch. I was uh, the protective challenger. I didn't look Where's what my uh, secondary one was, and I yeah. can't pull it up because I just took a sh- screenshot of it. But uh, so what that said was assertive, self-confident, intense, intense, big-hearted, and confrontational. So my wife absolutely laughed about the big-hearted part because I'm probably like the most heartless person in the world. <laughs> so there is that part, which maybe I have a heart, but I don't maybe know. Maybe you have a wing, like the wing. That- so there's, yeah. no, there's no absolutes. Yeah. You can so, be heartless and still be So that. I do agree with it for the most part. I'm really intense. I'm really self-confident. Like I don't need somebody to pump me up. Like I'm ready to rock and roll anyways. Um, the only, Like I said, the only one that was was weird was the big-hearted part because I really am pretty heartless. Well, if you so dig in- if Go, go ahead. ahead. Jinx. Jinx, Go. buy me a Coke or whatever. Hey. The, what is it? <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. You're, you're um, thinking you're gonna ask no, I was just going to say, like, if you dig into a Type 8 even further, it'll say you're a challenger, like you are you enjoy confrontation. Um, but I don't think that you go and seek that. But I think that if it comes to you, you're all yeah. about it. I mean, I've been in a couple fights so, before. So. <laughs> well, and, and so here's one of the things. You say you're, like, heartless, right? Yeah. Um, one of the core weaknesses it says is like it's it, a weird term, but like luster excess, and then at the excess and at the end it says uh, you'll push yourself willfully on life and people in order to get what you want, and that can come off as a little bit heartless because Are you're you so using us? because yeah, you're so <laughs> see it's not me Dan it's Brad I'm just using yeah. you I'm not using products <laughs> <laughs> right you're not using that he's pushing products <laughs> do you see yourself doing that though. Um, I guess so. I feel like I just, like, dude, I just work hard for anything. So maybe so. Maybe I do use people. Maybe you don't you know. even. Not, yeah, not necessarily like, use I probably, people, but I, I probably I don't notice you, it. Like I use them as tools. For, yeah, I'm sure I do. Um, I mean, it. it my wife laughed because she's like, that's exactly you except for the heartless part. You know, being heartless. So, and then she actually took it to, I don't remember what she got, but it was pretty much spot on for her as well. So I, I do think this is pretty accurate. And I think, I mean. Or two people deep, and it's been spot on. I'd honestly have to look for it. Probably something that doesn't want confrontation at all. The exact opposite the personality. Peacemaker. I think yeah, there was a probably peacemaker so. one. Did she tell you? She no, might, I didn't. Yeah. Know so, was there so. anything that you saw about that that you you take away and like apply it to work? Um, no, I mean, because I pretty much apply all these things anyways, you know. So I feel like it's just like Bobby said, it's just you know reassuring you that that is who you are type thing so i mean i i don't think there's anything that i would say like oh i need to do more of that because i feel like i that's obviously just who i am you know what i mean yeah so yeah nothing crazy all right cool two for two now we're going with i got you that's right dan now we're going with dan uh so for mine honestly uh i had the protective challenger for dan too Uh, i know that dan doesn't like to be perceived weak or powerless um I know Dan is very loyal, so he protects those in his inner circle. Um, and the whole, what was it? The core longing is you will not be betrayed. And I feel like, I mean, I feel like that's kind of what anybody wants. But, um, but yeah, I, I went with type 8 for Dan. I got type 5. Which is? Uh, investigative thinker. Why is that? Um, well, I was looking at, uh, I was looking at the, is the, Third one is at the weakness. Yeah. Um, feeling that you lack inner resources, that too much interaction with others will lead to catastrophic depletion. Maybe I misread that. Um, yeah, maybe I misread that. Uh-oh. Maybe, maybe I want to we'll, go back and we'll – maybe, we'll, maybe we'll circle back. Yeah. Bobby, what do you got for Dan? Uh, I actually was going to say the same thing for me on that one. I want to say type 7. Mm. Hmm. You just called Dan an optimist? <laughs> he, dreams, he dreams big. He dreams big. I think that Dan has some great moments. That's Bobby being the optimist. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. You're welcome. Why don't you start hanging out with me more? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, you're saying I'm wrong. <laughs> Maybe type number two. <laughs> so I I had two that I penciled in for Dan actually. So I don't know. Did you? List What's your I, yeah, so I have so you I know have both one yours? that's 97 percent me, and okay. I have one that's 89 percent. I had five and eight for you. 
Okay, so what I had was actually uh, type two is what I wrote down first was a supportive advisor, and then I actually switched it to what I think is ninety seven percent is to type three, which is the successful achiever. And why is that? Uh, because I feel like Dan like has a guard up of like he does like he he doesn't want people to think that he sucks at life because I feel like he talks about that all the time like. People think I oh, thought I'd never be anybody. Blah, blah, Fucking blah. haters. Yeah. That's so, I and I think he wants to be successful. So that's that's what I had down. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else? Any other? Cool. Dan, Colin, what do you got? cue the music. So, I was surprised whenever I got it back because I thought I was type three, which was my eighty nine percent, ninety seven percent type seven. So, hey, oh, let's go! And I, bam, 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 bam. And I, that button. I 100% <laughs> agreed with it. I wanted to be more of a type three, um, and I didn't choose Damn. the answers because of that. But I'm super spontaneous. Like I don't have a calendar. I don't get locked down. And like, that's a big reason why I chose that. I was thinking like any time I pretty much if I just as long as I message you and say hey you want to go play golf I feel like you would say it, yes. yeah as long even as though Matt we haven't played golf yet well if Matt <laughs> has me locked on his calendar somewhere I can't go but other than that I'd be able to and and Keep that's the thing that like lockdown. I don't like being uh restricted from being able to do whatever I want to do and 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 so the spontaneous part that. for sure um and this this printout that we have in front of us isn't as in-depth as the Enneagram Institute's description and if you really dive into your your personality type on that website it will really give you a lot more details I think I don't know if you did you go through that Brad I just said like the five bullet points that they listed underneath which to me made a little bit more sense than what I'm reading here on this handout yeah but okay and, and then the type three obviously like yeah I mean I've you and and with type seven as well type three you nailed it like I am an opt. I'm very optimistic. Like I, I rarely complain, and I always look for, um, like what's next. Okay, this is a negative situation. How can we make it a positive? How can I grow this? Or I have these huge fucking business ideas all the time. Probably like ten a day. I would say that's awesome. So I'd say like thirty a day. You get for I a well, day. that's what I tell Matt. But I'm 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 I'm, I'm kind <laughs> of 30, backing it down in case anybody challenges me on it. You know, and then uh, so there's every once in a while because Dan's got his employees and I've got one employee and uh, like we're collaborating on some things together. There's some times where we get in these like little arguments in our desk right next to each other or through email and then it's like let's go to the, let's go to the fucking conference room and then we're sitting there and it starts talking and then you're just like yelling and then, and then and one I'd of the love times to be a fly on the wall one of the, yeah. one of the times i was talking about an idea of i had and dan was just like he's like motherfucker he's like i come up with at least 30 ideas a day <laughs> and well, then we go and then we go out of the room and it's just like dead silent like all the music stop we're like we're what like, if they could hear yeah, us yeah they could definitely hear us they turned <laughs> off the music on purpose so they could yeah. hear what you were talking about oh. so yeah so anyways that i thought it was spot on especially when i looked at one and two um combined i definitely i'm just happy it. to get one person's mm -hmm. right Look at that. Yeah, I'm hoping I can get go. one more. You should get Matt. <laughs> I, I hope so. I'm going to try. Um, okay, so then we'll move to me then. Uh, Colin, you want to start it off? I had you as a one. Through and through. Moral perfectionist. As did I. Yeah. Number one as well. Yeah. I, I'm going to go ahead and say I think that you're. we're pretty similar to me, and I think that you're a type seven. Uh, what's the type seven? What's the name of that? The entertaining optimist. And I'm not just trying to like skate by and be like, I'm just gonna pick that one again. I really do feel that. Going with the strategy of like uh, multiple while, choice answers, so we pick the same one. While, yeah, yeah. while Dan's looking, does anybody want to elaborate on why in either of those? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. I every single time I'm around you, you're always. In, I mean, you're always in a good mood. I very rarely see you in a bad mood. So I think just as come far to the as, office like, sometime. And, hey, there's <laughs> dude. I did like that too. Just where like you know, like. You're like, you should see Dan sometimes at the office. Or, like, you guys don't see me sometimes whenever mm -hmm. I get fired up with some stuff. But overall, like, I feel like that's the kind of personality that you have. And I feel like like it's that same thing. Like, you're never going to want to miss out on going to do something fun. Um, mm -hmm. And, like, it's always like a volleyball tournament or going to do something. Um, and I think that that's something that's huge. So I, that's where I see that yep. being your personality type. I, ha I had cool. one because of uh, having integrity, being good, balanced, accurate, virtuous, and right. I think you're all, you know, the way you come prepared to every single one of these podcasts, you know, and then uh, the core weakness, 
you know, repressing your anger. I think like you have a good idea of how you want these pods to go, and then sometimes we deviate from it. <laughs> and I can read it on your face, like you're like, oh shit, come on, let's. My let's script get is over. He's the glue. Let's He's the glue. Silence your phone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but fuck you, seriously. <laughs> Dan, what'd you have? I, I think you're a one, but I was looking for something with a, li- a little bit low patience. Um, <laughs> and I that couldn't find it on this sheet. Low patience wasn't listed. I don't. As I don't a personality see, trait. I don't see motherfucking cocksucker on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with type ten dickhead. <laughs> no, no, that's a good dude. Um, I definitely think you know, planning and and being a perfectionist is is there. Um, but I was just looking for something with low patience because we get in a lot of things where you follow up very quickly. Mm-hmm. Like within hours, like, question hey, Dan, mark, uh, so sh- how should I plan for – it's like, Matt, we just talked about that like two hours ago. Right. <laughs> Fuck. You never know. Um, you never know how, know how lunch is going to go and, and what you should wear. Right. Uh, the Actually, I – so one was my secondary. Uh, I was a three. So type Damn. three is the who got uh, that? Did anyone get it? No, I would have actually I, never thought Damn. that too. So type I, I was gonna guess that. It's, it's, I can it's, see it. It's, I can it's, see it. It's interesting, and I'll explain a little bit of why. So type three is the successful achiever. So it says uh, they stand out for their confidence, efficiency, and ability to excel. Like the number one thing I highlighted there was like efficiency. Like I like being efficient. I like being on top of things. Um, and I wish we could have seen like those traits versus what I just read on this piece of paper. What? Well, so this is a different, like, I just pulled out. The only oh, so Matt has, has a own. special it's, oh, it's just sheet that none of us have. I'm He's sorry. A I'm sorry. I fucking re- <laughs> See, this is fucking type three. <laughs> <laughs> but, this, but you know why? It's because I hate looking stupid. I hate, I like, I'm, I'm, and I'm realizing this. Syndrome. I'm realizing this more and more that like, as much as you want to say, like, don't give a fuck what people think. I absolutely do. And I've grown, but like you go back a couple of years and it was, I, the idea of how I looked so heavily outweighed what I actually was doing. So I would, I would have much rather given off a perception than actually be the person. And I still am like to an extent, like full transparency. Like there's a lot of times where it's like, I would much rather look the like Dan, I dress up for work every day. You know, it's like. I, I, you know? Yeah, yeah holy shit. Yeah, we, yeah. Start, we start a video podcast. Oh, and shit. I think we should all wear frat tanks. You look like you ironed your gym clothes. We'll do interviews. You look like you ironed your We've done interviews where like Matt will be like, hey, I'm bringing somebody in. You want to talk? You We want to meet with them today. And I'll literally look down and be like, I have a stain on my shirt. <laughs> but I'll meet him. White stain on his crotch. Yeah. So, but it's, I mean, it goes to show like so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. white stain on the car. He's talking about jizz. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <got it. laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm fucking done. No, 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 go ahead. No, I think that makes sense. That was my second choice. That was actually what I was about to choose, and then I was like, I'm on a roll with the sevens. Let's keep this. Let it keep it going. Here. Everybody's a fucking seven. <laughs> so I think the biggest thing here is the key motivators are wanting to feel valuable, competent, and accomplished. Yeah, I, like absolutely. Um, it said the key objections are, um, I want to avoid failure with that, which I 100% fucking do. That's why I try to come prepared. That's why I try to understand what's going on. So I don't fail or don't look stupid, uh, being unprepared average to others. Yeah. That goes along with perception. Uh, don't want to be overshadowed. God damn it. I hate when Dan fucking texts when I'm in the middle of trying to just tell him something. And then I'll, and then I'll just stop <laughs> talking in the too. middle I, of it. I hate when people Wait, do that he too. texts you while you're having no, 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 no. So if spontaneous really nice and them. like, here's the thing. As soon as I get bored with a situation. Oh, yeah. I it's am so checked out. You guys are in a meeting oh, together, yeah. and I've he'll seen be texting this you. Well, he'll no, start. No, he'll no, he'll no, start we'll rambling. Talking, and I'll be like, no, he'll be "We'll talk. We'll else. be talking about something, <laughs> and Dan will just go down and start texting on his phone, and I'll stop, and then and then there'll be a moment of silence. He'll go, yeah, huh? No, I was, I'll, I'll be like, listening. I fucking heard oh, okay. you. I, I thought like, you were saying you. he I was texting there. you while you were talking to him, and I was like, <laughs> what like, is he trying Matt, to shut the He's like, here's something that really motivated me today. But uh, but no, I thought it was I thought it was pretty spot on, um, and it's something that kind of already knew about myself. But it's it's one of those things where it's like the weaknesses in, in all of these. We talked about this one: nothing's absolute. Two, uh, going along with that, you can change, right? Like you can like over the years you shift because your priorities change. Uh, but I love these because it's an insight into motivators. Like the fact that like 
like my perception and uh and what do they call it um I'm blanking on the word, but how you're looked at in like the hierarchy of things. Like if that's a motivator to you, it's like, if that's what motivates me now, I'm not going to, yeah, status. If that's a motivator to me, even though it's not this, like my motivator is curing fucking world hunger or whatever it is. Like I'm going to use my motivator to my advantage. It could change, but if I know that's my motivator, it's like, okay, why not push it to do better? Lean into it. Yep. Absolutely. Cool. I was a seven. Oh, we didn't even get to uh, guess. Yeah. <laughs> you were up I was gonna guess. Uh, <laughs> no, yep, that's what I was gonna oh guess too. Oh my god! <laughs> you were putting it away. Seven. Oh I'm gonna god. go ahead and Jesus. say seven. Yeah, I was gonna Colin. guess. I was gonna guess yeah. seven for sure. If, if, we're, if, we're, if I was a betting guy, I'd probably bet on seven. Well, okay. Well, <laughs> it's a good guess. did you did you I see had, what your secondary one was? I, no, oh, no, no. Okay. Let me. I, I, I was had, actually gonna say you were. a Two. Hey, s- stop saying two and start saying what it is, because people. I was out gonna there say. Can't I was gonna oh, say yeah. you were a two supportive advisor. That's what I had. I had supportive advisor. I, I, I had type three successful achiever down. I was actually gonna say successful achiever as well. Okay. For you. So, so that would be interesting to notice. So, second. So you guys, was. why successful achiever? I don't know Colin at all. Like literally two podcasts now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just text back and forth. So I just know. Well, with that being my secondary type, and like once again, us doing having similar things that we do like it's really easy to like just be thought of someone who is like not awesome like we're insurance like yeah. like yeah. people don't think highly it's of insurance yeah. you know um but we're gonna try and make it sexy <laughs> um so that's why i thought that for colin just randomly yeah the reason i thought it was i feel like him and dan get in like these little bickery matches about stuff like what you don't think i'm right <laughs> like so <laughs> i feel like like i feel like he'll just be sitting across the room from dan just looking i'm like what you don't think so <laughs> like he everybody else is having what a, yeah. i think so uh, <laughs> that's why i put that eyes. out there it's, your eyes. it's piercing you know? yeah no it's just to see he just you wants know? to bang you yeah so that that's kind of why i went with two is um we've had conversations and i feel this way a, a, a lot too but being appreciated and you know just being taken seriously um as a professional uh, like you know there's a lot of times where like i won't be taken seriously just because of my past and whatnot like, your stains on your shirt yeah because i yeah <laughs> yeah i have this fucking stain on my shirt but i can it's his favorite you shirt can, you can, i can hire you your wife needs to buy you a tide pen those things are great really i'll have to look into those yeah anyways so, amazon i'll uh, send you a link <laughs> Am- amazon affiliate here <laughs> God damn, he can plug anything. So, uh, no, but anyway, so that, that's why I that's why I chose to. So what do you what were your thoughts on being an entertaining optimist based off what that explains, Colin? What can you relate it to how you actually are? Um, I I I looked at the weaknesses uh, first, and and I'm somebody who I, I try to. It, it's right, you know. Like I I can go. I can take advantage of a situation or I can go too far to the wrong extreme or a good extreme. I'm like you, you know, like if I throw myself into something, I want to give it 100%. Mm-hmm. And that, that comes with bad things too. That <laughs> yep. could be drinking, smoking, you know, like going out, staying out way too late, just taking advantage of it. But like, that's kind of what drives me is like, I know that's where I've been in trouble before. I know that that's what I've been judged on before in my life. So like, I try to keep a good grip on that. Like, so I'm, I'm like very, very hard on myself. So type, type seven, when, yeah, I mean, it makes sense completely. I would have, I would have also said type two, but, um, did I, you I looked, say your secondary looked, already? No, I, I didn't look at it. You had to scroll to the bottom. Yeah. It's no big deal. Yeah. But yeah. I would have said, I would have said, I would say the weaknesses are, it's spot on. And that's kind of, th- those are kind of the things that drive me is, you know, just kind of be a better person is like, I, I like to take self inventory a lot, you know, just to make sure I'm living my life how I want to be living my life. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Absolutely. So, uh, just kind of a <clears throat> running tally here. Colin and Brad didn't get any right. So, Damn. you Sweet. guys are going to have to buy us lunch sometimes. I did, I did get uh, Dan's secondary right. Mm. Horseshoes and hand So, that's like a .5. <laughs> well, it was only like 5% difference, right? Wah, wah, so, wah, I was actually... Wah. Wah. Oh, oh, there it is! Oh. <laughs> I was actually thinking if I'm a seven and a three, Stay that's like you have a, being a ten. Right? Exactly. No fucking way. Now the thing is, you don't have to stay off the weed for the seventy-five hard challenge. Yeah. That is not in there. I know. Uh, I didn't tell you guys, but I'm going to weed. Vegas in like a week. Oh, oh man. No. So are you going to lose the challenge no, while you're there? He's just going to get high as a kite. Yeah, I yeah. think we. I think we should Bro. circle back to the challenge real quick and touch like. I, I, I think so too. Because Bobby's 
24 days in. Today's okay. day number 24. So what was what was your starting weight? And uh, I know it's not a physical challenge. It's more like a mental toughness. My starting weight was 255. 255. And to date, do you know where you're at? <laughs> I weighed myself this morning 217.8. So Damn. what is that? Quick Damn. math. Uh, you would know probably. 35. 18, yeah. It's 35. Is it 35? Look at that. No, it's 38. Okay, so that's a lot. Oh, so that's impressive. If you round up. So I started five I days ago. At, do you have your abacus with you? It's 37. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I started Point five two. days ago. I was 213, essentially, and I'm already down to 207 today. Love it. So, Dan, you I haven't today. weighed in. I thought we were going to uh, supplement Super Do you have a scale today. here, Justin? <laughs> yeah, he does. God it damn it! He it's probably a has a what scale, but he, studio is you can't, yeah, you can't, you can't you wait know. me with it. <laughs> Colin, that's uh, a big I, nug. I'm, I'm sitting at 177. Dang! God, so, look at that skin so, and bones over there. No man. I know. Well, Must so, be nice to like so, have a high metabolism. So this is the, and the reason <laughs> we just want to ask what Matt weighs too, just so we know. He, he knows for sure. This. Yeah, when 196.4. Body fat. What's your body fat? I got a scale. Twelve point. Do you? Nice. Nice. I'm so, gonna get under 10 percent just woo, to be because that is was like his a goal, whistle, like a be. cat call on there. <laughs> so, so the so here's the cool thing, and let's talk about this. So they're going to Supplement Superstore to get weighed. They've got a machine there because I think the overall goal isn't necessarily like just lose weight. It might be like the overarching goal, but for most people, like Colin, Colin probably wants to put on a little bit of muscle too, right? Like I think that's a picks whole, a skinny guy. That's a, yeah, damn right. That's yeah, a. Yeah, body like, fat, getting body fat. It's lower. overall body comp- 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 composition. Composition. Jesus. There it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, overall body comp-, comp. Composition. Fuck me. Can we cut that out? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's all part actually. Of there's it. no cuts. On I think I just podcast. stroked out. This is a live. completely raw podcast. Like there are no raw. edits. I think I just stroked out. So no ads. So You're gonna it's stroke a. Except Affleck has a policy for that. <laughs> it's a really cool machine that's going to show everything. Right? And yeah. not just the weight. So we can post that stuff too. We, we can post to. it. Yeah. We'll put it on the. Except my weight. And the guys, is, and not to. <laughs> no, keep, yours too, Dan. <laughs> and not to keep plugging for Sella, but the guys at Supplement Superstore are way better than like the GNC guys or the Vitamin oh, World. Yeah. And you can just go in to get your measurements and, and it'll support show, local. It'll show a graph. It'll. You can go in. You don't have to buy anything. You can just check in. You give your phone number, and they create a profile for you. How much does it cost? Do we even know that? Zero, zero dollars. Oh, oh, it's zero. To zero. Do that? You, go in there, you can go oh, in there wow. and not Zip, buy a not single a thing. Put you on a diet plan. Yeah, too. you can go in and not buy a single thing, and uh, huh. and you can go in. I go in every Monday. Every, oh shit! Every Monday. Do you really? Yep. Every Monday. And well, did, for the past four weeks. He's got it on his calendar, so yes. it's like every Monday Penciled at eleven fifteen. Here, I want to ask Bobby. You you dove into it last week, but Brad and Dan. Like what? Do, what are you guys hoping to achieve? Like, what's your what's your big bugaboo? So, so like, one of the things for bugaboo. me is everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people see seventy five hard as a weight loss challenge, and I think it's more of a time management challenge or a mental challenge. And so for me, it's like it's cool to see the weight loss and and the you kind of reaping what you sow or, or seeing those benefits of going through it. But for me, it's really trying to control my day versus my day controlling me. So that'd be my goal. I love that. This, so my goal is slightly more centered weight loss, but like what Dan says is what I found already in five days. Like today, I got a lot of work to do, and it's like four yeah. thirty. So you know, I still have to do two workouts tonight. But um, I I'm more like I want to be able to say that I actually did it, like seventy five days, because you see, like we've seen people who said they've done it, and I I can tell you right now after five days. Th- they did not do it for <laughs> 75. Do it. There's a super yeah. cool pin or something like that that you can buy too once you're done with it. So we'll all carry those around. Or yeah. we'll all go get tattoos. Yeah, Fuck exactly. It. <laughs> I, I was, I was going to say that same thing. I already have a bunch People of tattoos. I'll marathon. get one more. People I don't care. This is, this is tougher than a marathon. I, I yeah, totally so. agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the mental toughness part of it is definitely the bigger challenge. And like I told you guys, the amount of knowledge that I've soaked up already just by listening to podcasts every morning on a walk is like, yeah. More than I have in the last month. I seriously haven't read a book in like three years, and now I'm almost done with my second one since I've started it. And yeah. I'm like, this is already a, just such a big deal for me personally. And I think that's an, a, a total business idea, 75 hard book suggestions because yeah. there's none out there. Yeah. Priscilla has like four. 
yeah, it's a good idea. Bobby might have to plug that next week. I, I, I can, I can <laughs> work Matt, on that. Matt, what's your goal for like watching us do seventy five hard? <laughs> my goal is gonna, you know, <laughs> to hammer a bunch of seltzers. <laughs> what, what my goal always is, I'm gonna track your guys' progress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show you a graph. He's gonna have an Thanks, Excel. Sheet. It's gonna be outlined in Excel. I'm gonna put it up on a PowerPoint, and I'm gonna explain who won at the end of it. I love now, it. Now, Matt, so you're the outside guy here. What do you think is going to happen with the four of us? Oh, win? yeah. So you can be- you should be able to bet on a horse. What? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm personally – I want everybody to do it, whatever. <laughs> if so- I thought it was going to come in a lot. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> – <laughs> No, that's – we got access to a soundboard, bro. Yeah, right. Hey, you should pick a horse that you want to bet on. I will. By next week, I'll have a horse. All right. I love it. And yeah, it'll, 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 it'll already be done by then, and I'll be able to pick between them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really think Dan will be done by next week? No. No, Dan's incredibly competitive. And if and it's not because he wants to win, it's because he hates losing. Yeah, that is true. So I don't think he'll be done by next week. What do, if, you, what do you think the biggest hurdle is going to be for you guys? I think I ha- – I will just be honest. I think I have an advantage of being 24 days in. I've done this. However, I think that I could – I mean, I've heard a lot of people say once you get to day 40 and 50, it just gets super crazy difficult. I mean, I'm motivated by a lot of external factors right now, and now I'm motivated by one more by not losing a hundred dollars. Yeah, and I really yeah. want to be able to be like, yeah, I fucking won that shit. I got your money right now, pocket. like in my head, I already know that at the end of this, like I'm winning this. Yeah. Like, and I hope we all get through it. I hope it's like, yeah. what's the tiebreaker? Do we just go until someone gets Taco Bell? Somebody well? taps. <laughs> yeah, I think me and Dan's are actually going to be the same, and I think it's just because we're married and have kids. It's just yeah. going to be the time management of making it happen. Like, I mean, I have to get up before yeah, work to huge. do a workout and then i have to find some time after i get home well, that's colin too. to do a workout yeah i, got a baby yeah, I know but you know, his is a so baby you guys all have, oh, you guys yeah. all have kids. yours is yeah. a baby you kids, that's so too, that's so fucking easy to you'll you'll, you'll know when it, you get there they yeah. sleep yeah. <laughs> he's at the once i have to walk my family's dog shit. like once every couple days guys yeah so do you do you understand what's happening like they are already coming up with excuses yeah. of why no, there's no, gonna I'm, be harder and why, why they're I'm not lose. worried about it. Colin that. asked for our biggest hurdle. Okay. Mm. That was the answer. I think the uh, the fast meals, that's gonna be the hardest one for yeah. me. Because Crazy like bowls today, rats, like dude. I literally left the office, went home and grilled. So. I figured you stayed home just to prepare for <laughs> seventy five hard today. Yeah. That meal really prep did. is <laughs> that meal prep is super important. Man. I thought he was like, I have to take the day off because I have to do two workouts. I have to. I'm meal prep. actually quitting my job for seventy five <laughs> yeah. days just to win this. I think that this will, in the grand scheme of things, it's going to make us better in our job. And we talked last week about like the like attracts like with my story and how more people that I know are doing this now. I think that you guys are gonna you're gonna get better clients. They're gonna hear about this. You're, I think I think we should post it on our social media like i've been sharing my that thing to my instagram and my facebook i think you should set it up and share it on there man i think it's going to help us not only just in our personal lives we might change someone else's life that needs it like that seriously actually needs this like i needed it or maybe someone that just wants it like a lot of you guys want it um i think that's gonna be really impactful and i think that's gonna show in our personal lives and our professional lives absolutely yeah i agree so we're gonna wrap this up. I wanted to ask Colin about one thing. So I, I have a friend that I'm knows scared. Colin. Oh, <laughs> Colin, can you baseball games? What? Did can you I play baseball? No, Cardinals. Do you have a story around that? Been to been to a lot of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh! So are we diving into something hey, that's no, a really no, embarrassing right a, now for just Colin? To wrap it up. So <laughs> I jumped on the baseball field during a yeah. no uh, way during a Cardinals Brewers game. Yeah. Is there video when evidence of it? There, there's a, there, I think there's a couple pictures somewhere. Maybe on my old Facebook. I <laughs> love it. Where so, you, now were you streaking? <laughs> so no, no, no. no, no, set no. The, you want to be scene. taken so, seriously? All right. So here's here's how it happened. I'll tell you exactly what the turn of events. So um. I hope you got a hundred bucks. So my, my cousin, uh, it was his 21st birthday the night before. And, uh, I, I had gotten home and we had got, we, my roommates had, uh, tickets to a day game. So it was like 12, 15, 1, 15, whatever, like a day game. Movie. And we got hammered and, uh, we were sitting there and, uh, my roommate goes, I'm fucking jumping on the field. And I was like, and I told him I was like, I'll go with you. You know, and I'm like looking around like <laughs> yeah, nobody's gonna do this. And he goes, All right, dude, let's go. And we walk all the way down, you know, we're going all the way down to the stairs. We had shitty seats, so we're going all the way down. And when we get up to like the aisle of the right field yeah, the right field wall, I stopped him and I was like, dude, how far are you gonna take this? You know, like 
really going to do this? <laughs> he walked all the way down there. Yeah. He looked at me drunk as a skunk and was like, we're fucking doing it. And he looked up at our, at, at like our little aisle section and uh, every single one of them was like looking down and he was like, dude, we can't look like bitches now. We either got to leave or we got to do this. And he just turned around, walked down. I followed him and this like old lady, she was an usher. She was like, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I jumped in. And like, she like can a, see it yeah, in slow-mo. There's like a no. like, or something like right in between the wall and the first section. And I jumped in. I turned around. I, I apologized to her and I hit the ground. Were you just like, I'm right sorry, we, I have to Did do you this? get tackled? Right when we hit the ground, my roommate just got fucking leveled. This dude, this really? dude had to be waiting for something like this to happen. His whole life. Yeah, his whole fucking, career. He's like, it somebody was, steps on line, this is my field. On the field. So yeah. here's what happened. So he, this this dude takes him down. Wait, I, Ray look, Lewis. I look over and my, my just roommate's you. Feet, yeah, my roommate's feet are like, he's parallel. Now I you're mean, wide that, open. Yeah, now, so, now it's just you in the inside. baseball field. So, so I take I take, so I take, take so off towards like left field, and I see this guy, Paul Blart, just like <laughs> Paul Blart <laughs> waddling over from, from the other side of the field. And I thought what he Did was grabbing. Did you do grabbing, a deke? I thought what he was grabbing was a taser, and he's like, get the fuck on the ground. And the dude who uh, took him down. Grabbed my legs and ripped me down. <laughs> While you were still running? Pulled me back to him and they cuffed us both right there. Oh. <laughs> and, and since I didn't get very far, uh, there was this little girl as I was walking into the tunnel. She was like, <laughs> so you have to redeem yourself is, is that yeah. in 2021 like, is yeah. what we're so, so how far changed your life that was like rock bottom what was when cardinals the little girl was like, saying it's, boo. Actually, it's fucking hardcore they are dicks and so my, my, yeah. my roommate, <laughs> you ran on the they're field like throwing us up against the wall my roommate's like get the fuck off me pig and like i'm like dude shut up like, like, yeah, we are I'm already arrested like, don't make it worse he's gonna whoop your ass he's gonna whoop my ass too for your so we had a buddy who got us out. He worked at the Justice Center, and he got us out. Uh, and we still got tickets and stuff. But, yeah, I mean. So you're not banned for life or anything? You? I mean, I went back that year. Just I was like, there's no way they got me. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no way. And then that guy's waiting Actually, for you. So we got very, very lucky. So uh, the the judge looks at our charge and, like, looks at everything. Did he watch the happened, video? And he <laughs> started laughing and goes, get your ass to the end of the line. Because we were, you know, down at the courthouse. They had some more important stuff to deal with. And, uh, and uh, that was so probably his punishment. After everybody Waiting. was gone, he was like, I'm going to make the assumption that you guys were fucking hammered and this will never happen again. And you guys can pay uh, court cost and do 60 hours community service in Dogtown. Uh, Damn. And so I had to do that. And then the, when we, uh, we set up the community service. And my roommate went out of town, so I had to do it like all by myself. Oh man! To get a letter from St. James to sixty hours. Yeah. See, I don't know if that's worth it. I'd rather pay the money. Yeah, I would have made a <laughs> yeah. donation. Yeah. But the great thing was, is I had like I had three like three months before my court date, so I saved up like every dollar that I had. Then I was twenty one. Like you know, I barely had enough money to buy beer at any point right. in time. And uh, yeah, and so I just had. You know, money after that. I, I think that's it. actually that's like awesome. That's an cool. awesome story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I heard about <laughs> that. You, yeah, by the way. Danger. Danger. <laughs> yeah, we, like we should person. bring danger on the like pod. That fucking guy doesn't have some stories, dude. He needs to be fucking. We could probably fill up a whole podcast. So he that. actually told me that today, and I was like, I'm gonna ask him about that on the pod. Oh, but that uh, motherfucker. <clears throat> is that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool guys. Um, yeah, just wrap it up. Check out this uh, personality assessment. I think it's super interesting stuff. Track our progress on this challenge. What else, Matt? I'll let you wrap it up, actually. That's it. That's a good way to end it. Uh, we appreciate you guys listening. If you guys have questions or want to approach us about coming on the pod or if one of Bobby's 70 brands want to be a sponsor, probably yeah, I tried to invite somebody on the pod this week, and somebody else like filled that post with hate. So oh. whatever. I won't go into it, but it was really interesting. Maybe next week we'll talk Maybe about it. Maybe next week we'll talk about haters. Yeah. And letting them be your motivators. Cool. Drink that hater aid. Yeah. Hater tears. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Going to get another workout in.